we invested our own money. We were really fortunate. I mean, it's, it's a sad but a, a happy story because let me put this in the way that I thought was so lovely. But around, it was June of 2017, our grandmother passed away and she passed some money to us. Mm-hmm. And so we used the sort of we're sitting this money and we, we used that money to start this business. And we're like, oh, she's your angel investor. And I was like, oh. that's exactly what this is Start at the Storefront, the podcast where we talk to business owners and entrepreneurs about the untold challenges of scaling a business. If you're enjoying this show, don't keep it a secret. Tell a friend about us, and if you haven't already, head over to the podcast app to give us a rating and a review. It really does go a long way in helping us get the word out. We've got great guests every week who offer candid looks at what it takes to succeed as an entrepreneur, and hopefully you can take something away from their lessons. Today's guest is Chris Douglas, a co-founder of Rooted Shots, a brand offering plant-based wellness you can drink on the go. And he's got a special discounted offer for all of you. Hey guys, also just want to let everybody know that if you come to our website, rootedshots.com, code startup, you get a 10% off anywhere. Cold and flu season is upon us, and Rooted Shots are a delicious way to keep your body running on all cylinders. Head on over to rootedshots.com to grab some for yourself. Now back to the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast. We're here with Chris Douglas, co-founder of Rooted Shots. Rooted Shots. What is Rooted Shots? So Rooted Shots are, uh, the way we're describing them is dried plant-based wellness shots made with organic superfoods, organic plants, and then 500 milligrams of vitamin C. So another way to think of it is like like an all-natural plant-based organic emergency. And the idea for, for Rooted Shots basically sort of came out of a solution to a problem I was already experiencing. I've, I've, I've always listened to and, and read about entrepreneurs who like came across a problem in their life, right? And, and uh, they, they created the solution to that problem. My idea was mm-hmm. like, if I ever start a company, that's something that I really want to do. Because so then you're passionate about it. Then yeah, exactly. Like, it's, yeah. Like, it's like you're actually you're actually fixing something for yourself as opposed to just like, I'm going to make this thing and then try to convince people to sell it. It's like, oh no, I've already sold myself on this. Now, right. now anybody can, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm certain I'm not the only person in the world who, you believe in who it. Who has this need, right? Sure. Um, but what happened was, I, 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 in college, I would drink, I get really bad colds. Okay. And so I would drink one of those emergency packets, like a vitamin C you know, yep. drink mix. Packets. Every morning. Every single morning. Wow. And if I was getting sick morning and night. Like it was like, it really just became like a, a wellness sort of ritual for me. And do you know a lot of people who are doing the same thing? When I tell this story, I hear from a ton of people like, oh, Set, I yeah. emergency packets. Yeah, I don't know why, but but I do hear that. I think it's the cure hangovers. A lot of people, but uh, like I know my wife does it whenever she gets on a plane or if we're traveling. Yeah, and I've never done that. So I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, I just gotta go get some emergency. Yeah, I'm like, for what? She's like, vitamin C. I'm like, why don't you eat an orange? And so she doesn't, you know, like I don't know, I don't know anything about it. But anyway, a lot of people have the problem. My girlfriend does the same. She had not anymore, but she used to, you know, when we would travel, she'd have she'd open her backpack and there'd be five emergency packets. Mm -hmm. I do think you're probably right. There was, I remember we would always drink emergencies like after a night of like parties in college. <laughs> it did become this like sort of, it became this wellness ritual. And then I was living out here and I've always been a you know, health and wellness and, and, and food conscious person. And I sort of really paid <clears> attention <throat> to labels and what I was eating and weighing my body. And uh, one day I looked at the, the back of my, my packet and it's a nine gram packet and six to seven of those grams are sugar. Of emergency. Of emergency. And that's pretty universal around a lot of those like sort of fizzy vitamin C drinks. Okay. So yeah. three grams of it is the product. So like, like and one and a half. One and a half. And the rest is just there to make it taste like sugary just, deliciousness. Just sugar. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it was one of those like, <laughs> well, there that goes. I, yeah. I, I just, I stopped. I stopped. I, that's not the point, right? And sugar, sugar does not support the immune system. Like it feeds, it feeds bacteria. So if you're sick, it's actually counterintuitive to what you're, counterproductive for what you're trying to do yeah i was like i'm not I'm not doing that anymore and i live close to a juice shop and so i started walking over to this juice shop every single day or four to five times a week and buying these ginger lemon cayenne shots or these turmeric what honey. what year was this this was probably 2000 like 16 17 okay okay three started, years like, ago two three years ago yeah two three years ago i started yep. i started drinking these shots just already and they're expensive, right? They're not cheap. Five, they're like four to six bucks. Okay. The average is like five dollars. Okay. You and get, it's, you know, it's two ounces. It's just fresh squeezed ginger juice with maybe a little lemon juice and then cayenne pepper sprinkled on the top. Got it. And it's a, it's an intense. How much is an emergency? The cost of like an emergency pack. 
packet. Yeah, or 50 cents. 50 cents. Okay, got it. So there is like this wide sort of, there's there's the $5 expensive, like high luxury good. There's the 49, 50 cent sugar bomb. Sugar bomb. <laughs> and then there's nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that though. I was, I just, I just had a problem. So I was just like, okay, well, I'm not doing this. I'm going to invest my money in this. And I was draining my wallet. It's kind of inconvenient. Not kind of, it's inconvenient. It's out of the way. You have to drive 5, 10, 15 minutes. You have to wait in the line. Yeah. You have to press it. By the time you get home, it's a 30 to 40 minute experience. And if anyone has a juicer knows, it's a pain. It's a huge pain to clean it and to get it right yeah, and then take it apart. A 20 minute experience. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not fun. And, and you're if throwing. you're sick, you're not going to. Like, like the last thing what we do is like either getting in the car or like walking around your kitchen. Like you're laid up in bed or laid in front of the TV. Right. Like sleeping. So my cousin, my co <clears throat> who ended up becoming my co-founder, his name's Will. He lives in New York. Shout out to Will. Yeah, shout out to Will. Uh, lots, lots of shout outs to Will. Will is, <laughs> Will is a integral part of this business. So um, I'll be talking a lot more about Will. But, nice. But he was out visiting and I was like, oh, so we get a juice shot. And just because I, I do that now. And uh, as we're driving over, I was complaining complaining about this exact problem I have. Yeah. And Will was the one who said, well, has anybody done what you're describing? Has anybody made a organic plant-based emergency or has anybody made this tried organic juice shot? Yeah. And it was so obvious. My response was like, you know, I haven't thought about that, but like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody has. Like, right. I, think it was, I was just like, that's, that makes so much sense. Like somebody's got to have done that. And so we got our shots. We went, we went home and we just started Googling. Because we'd always talked about like doing something together. I was like, this is a really good idea. Like, let's see who's doing this. And literally, in that first day, we, we literally found nobody. And in the year and a half since, we found nobody. But in those like first couple hours, I was like, well, this is an amazing idea. Like, we should do this. And a good opportunity. There's totally. no competition in the space. Right. Awesome. And there's, and there's already like, I, I wouldn't call them competitors, but there's like, um, complimentary adjacent products like 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 mushroom like you, coffee like four sigmatic like there's you know okay. adaptogens there's sort of this like plant wellness fungus based world that is evolving this this large market but there's this one corner of it that's not being tended to and so we literally bought the domain name that night and and it's rooted rootedshots.com uh, we were just like we and we bought like you know I think we bought like 10 domain names so it's just I was like we don't know what <clears> it's going to be so once you did that, what was your first step? Did you guys start, um, I guess, I don't even know how you'd begin to make the product. Right. So I was in, I was in sales for a kombucha company, um, a company called Whalebird Kombucha, which is Whalebird. Yeah, Whalebird. Oh, Whalebird. Um, okay. It's a California local company. Another, another shout out. If you're in <laughs> LA or California and you're in Alaskan's there on Whole Foods, grab a can of Whalebird Kombucha. It's, nice. It's very good. Um, so I already had, you know, health and wellness and, connections in that space but before we we got to utilizing those connections we had to make something and so i, I can show you a photo in a little bit I, I literally there's a picture of my my kitchen table and i started ordering freeze-dried fruit i started ordering dried organic ginger i started ordering dried organic turmeric everything is organic organic cayenne pepper organic black pepper and i just started like do you mash it like what do, how do you get it to it all comes powder okay so it's powdered it's form when you get powder. it yeah, yeah. got so it's it like if you buy like powdered ginger at so got it, got it. walking in and buying the spice, tearing the top off. Yep. I bought a scale off of Amazon. And I just like became my own little like at home like chef. Okay. I was like, let's, let, let's see what I can figure out. And like two months later, I uh, I saw Will again and I, I brought all my powders with me. Actually, security stopped me in the airport <laughs> and like opened my bag and it was just fruit powder and like spices. Like, what are you doing? And I, and I tried to explain to them and they're like, and they just swapped it all. And they're like, it doesn't, it's not explosive. On you go. It was, it was, it, it made sense. I was like, this looks weird. Um, and, and, and so we started, we started teaming with these recipes. We started sort of honing it in. And we got to a point where, what I said a little bit, I was like, I think our product is, is like a, a B minus. Somewhere between a B minus. In terms of plus. taste or in terms yeah, of? Yeah, in terms of like taste. Like okay. we're pretty honed in on, on, I think the amount of ginger we want, the amount of turmeric we want. Um, in some of our shops, you know, is, we have what is considered a, an approximate serving of ginger or an approximate serving of turmeric. And, and um, before this is all starting, you're using your own money. You're funding it yourself to yeah, get the I mean, domain. We've spent maybe $250, right? Like, and are you, are you like starting the social media or are you waiting to get no. the product? Okay, so you're yeah. just R&D phase. So this you have was, the domain. This but, was June of 2018. So this was a year and a half ago. 
Okay. And we didn't end up launching until July of 2019. So like we really, at first we were like, let's go. And then we were like, if we're going to do this, mm -hmm. um, let's really, let's really make sure that what we bring to market is, is something we can stand by and bring coming back to my kombucha, my kombucha experience. Something I recognized was the kombucha. I really, I mean, I'm sure I'm subjective, but I really think I can say objective. Like it's some of the best tasting kombucha I've ever had. Yeah. And I noticed in meetings that if I poured it for somebody, like all I had to do was get them to put it in their mouth. As soon as they put it in their mouth, they were sold. Yeah. I was, I was selling the kombucha. That's I think the hard part. I think people don't realize um, with beer or anything, right? I think if you can get it to taste good and you have around two to six varieties, yeah. whatever it might be, different flavors, then you're good. Then that's like the hard part because if you can get people to like it based on taste, now your issue moves from can I make a good product to marketing. Right. And so you're that's awesome. And, and, and that was really important to me. I was like, I, we can't, there are plenty of products that have succeeded by tasting like crap. And just convincing people they're good for them. Correct. Like you said, if this can taste good and I can tell that they're good, it's good for them, or it's mine. Yeah. Like, like, and so I, I was like, we really need to take our time to make sure that what we launch is is great. And so a conversation that I started having was, what if we enlisted a food chemist? Like, what if we brought somebody in to take that product from that B, B minus, B plus, and elevate it to an A? So when we walk into a meeting, we're not anxious, nervous about <clears throat> how the flavor of the product is going to be received. We're just, if you like this, which we think you will, like, let's go, let's work, let's, let's work through this. Yeah. Um, did you do that? We did. So we ended up doing... How do you find a food chemist? LinkedIn? <laughs> it's, like, it's a hilarious answer. Like, Google. Like, like I literally just started Googling, like... Were they LA... Was it a, a firm or was it a person that you had to hire? So, so we reached out to, like, four or five different beverage formulation companies. That's actually... Like That's the term? Industry. Okay. Like beverage formulation or product formulation. <laughs> okay. We found... We found this one company. We're basically just like an hour north of LA. We were talking to somebody in Atlanta. We were talking to all these all these different places. Um, Ocean Blue Innovation, and they basically just like understood what we were doing. They do a lot more wet products, so this was going to be new for them as well. But it's I, I just got the sense that like they just launched a lemon water company. I, I got reference checks from that guy. Like like I really got the sense that okay, like they can they can help. Mm -hmm. And we're not far, right? Right, like, you're close. Know, like, like our whole thing is like short ingredients list, organic plants. Like, like the rules of the world were very much already in place. Mm -hmm. All we needed them to do was take our measurements from a tenth of a milligram and like you know take it to or not a tenth of a milligram, a tenth of a gram, take it all the way to a milligram. Like, like, right. Really like like hone down that recipe because you more. don't have those instruments at home to yeah, get that those precision. Are, those are nice scales. Right. Like, yeah. 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 Scales real understanding of like how you know how do these different things how does how does ascorbic acid and turmeric and orange and citric acid how do these things all talk to each other how do they all relate to each other yeah um so you take a meeting and is it is it like a whole team that you meet with there so honestly it was it was a phone call okay with the ceo it was a reference check okay and i called will and i was like <laughs> you were so I mean, like, like you know, I was just like these these guys seem to really get it. Yeah, and they did over the course of the next three months. I How much does it cost to hire a food chemist? I think all in, we came out at around like from that was also another part of it. From beginning to completion, these guys quoted us at about six thousand dollars. Okay, so it was like it was an affordable thing, right? It's yeah, a smaller sort of. I, I would have guessed like fifty grand or something. So that was the other quote we were getting. We were like, well, that's sort of, <laughs> you know, that was, those are some of the other quotes we were getting. We're that's going to be a no. We were getting fifty, and we were like, well. Our goal is bootstrapping this thing. Right. So so some of those decisions were made simply because of price. Sure. We've been really lucky in that we've, we've been connected to people who have given us quotes that in the scheme of things are affordable mm -hmm. and they've really delivered. I mean, you know, you're right. This could have, this could have totally gone south. Yeah. Um, it didn't. And that was, that was a huge blessing for us. And how many, are you doing multiple iterations with them or is it something like once they have it, they call you and they say, Hey, come taste it. We nailed it. So we gave them two flavor concepts, okay. which was the orange strawberry and the ginger lemon cayenne. Which we have in front of us. Which we have in front of us. We have three of the colors in front of us for people listening. They're beautiful. Thank we you. Can't, yeah. we'll, we'll try them in a second. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, they, they, they're emblematic of what's in them. So the ginger lemon cayenne is just kind of a light yellow. The, the orange strawberry is a, a nice pink because of the strawberry. And then the last, part, the last ingredient we knew we wanted to incorporate was turmeric. And yeah. This one's bright yellow, which is because of the turmeric. Beautiful. But we didn't know... We didn't know how turmeric was going to be incorporated. Like we, had, you know, a lot of the shops when you go out there, 
the tumor of honey. Well, there's that you can't powder honey, honey, but mm. you can, but if it heats up, it melts. So you're like, well, we won't be able to incorporate honey. Like we're, we're sort of running into these roadblocks. The only thing <clears> we knew about the tumor is that we needed to incorporate black pepper as well because I can get into the chemistry of it later. But turmeric and black pepper are dependent. They're on friends. Them. Yeah, when it comes to your body digesting them, okay, it's essential. The, the Interesting. Okay. So I, I had a meeting with them, an in-person meeting. Once, once we agreed to work with them, I said. You know, these two flavors, ginger lemon and orange strawberry, were set on. The other thing we want is a turmeric flavor. Yeah. We have to have black pepper in that. Let's see what you guys come up with. And then over the next three months, I was driving up there probably once every two weeks. I was doing a tasting. I was giving notes. I was offering adjustments. How important is water in this whole thing? So I imagine if you're making this at home, right, as you scale. Yep. Does water play a huge factor or is it that the ingredients that you're using sort of overpower whatever water source you might have. Like, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't offset. Right. So so we've already started incorporating our shots into smoothies, and into okay. teas, and like like milk lattes and things like that. We did a smoothie series in the summer. We are doing a golden milk latte with our turmeric shot this fall. As long as you're consuming the turmeric or the vitamin C, like it, it, vitamin C is water-soluble. Turmeric is the turmeric, the ginger, the plants there. They're just organic plant matter, so it doesn't really... Okay. How you consume it is is irrelevant. Now, if you if you put your tumor shot into a glass of tequila, like yeah, that's going to make it delicious. Be, yeah, it's <laughs> make it delicious. It's not going to be the you, you're not going to walk out of that feeling. You know, you're you're also going to be. I don't want to say you're harming your body, but when you drink alcohol, like it, it is like an it, it's dehydrating, right? It's right. Dehydrating. It, it, it can be rough on the stomach. So like it, it, it is not necessarily. It's not like one can. Sure. So, so I, I consume it always with water, but I have started, you know, doing hot teas. I've started throwing in smoothies. So, yeah. It's okay. So, how long did the entire process take? From when was it? What do you say, like six months? So we, so we started. You mean the, the process of formulation? Yeah, until you were like, this is it. We have, we have the. Uh... I think we signed off either end of October, beginning of November. Okay. So we said like done. Um, Nailed it. There was, yeah, there was a bit. Started, Did you bring in friends during the taste testing or was it mostly you? And then toward the end, you're like, let's do some, some tastings randomly to friends, family. I would always leave with like six samples of okay. each flavor. And yeah. I had, this was one of those things right where I, I kept it like within a close tribe and I kept it within the same tribe. Because if I started going to different people, the notes would become confusing and conflicting. But if somebody had tried the first three iterations, they were understanding like where the going mm, okay. sometimes we would venture out of that but it was usually one sample of each would be shipped to will in new york my girlfriend would try one my roommate at the time would try one a couple other friends yeah who i was leaning on would try them and then that was where that was where we were going from um in terms of in terms of adjustments but it was mostly dictated by wills in my notes and then listening to other people's input got it so once we signed off on on formulations we had already begun a design process with a, a designer who I had, again, met through a kombucha connection. Yeah. Really talented. Again, we went out, we got design quotes. The most expensive quote we got was $85,000. <laughs> we're like, well, that's, we're, not, we're not doing that. Sign me up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, she she came in, I think our, I think our final quote with her was around $9,000. Okay. Um, and for the full thing, packaging, brand, logo, packaging font. design, basically brand creation. She, they, she helped us design our Shopify site. She designed our business cards. I mean, yeah, basically like our initial sort of the design whole brand. package. Yeah, that's um, awesome. And she's she's amazing. I mean, I we met somebody at Hawkfest. I met somebody at Hawkfest where you and I met. Yeah, and shout out to Hawkfest. Media. Hawk yeah. Hawk Media. Hawk yeah. Media. Hawkfest. Yeah. Hawkfest. Yeah. Hawkfest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better than Fire Festival. Yeah. More successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happened. There was there was food. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I passed along her information to one or two people I met there. I mean, she's really she's really. Does she have her own firm or is she like consulting? She's a freelancer. Okay. So she does everything herself. That's great. Um, and it's great because, you know, we're still, we still are, are making adjustments here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we hit her up and she can get, you know, design adjustments back to us within five days. It's awesome. Yep. That's so we awesome. So we did design with her. We went into production <clears throat> in April. Same firm? The same firm that did the, did the formulation? No. Different firm. No. So they take it and then they... So we basically send off all of our recipes yeah. to a co-packer. Okay, a co-packer. Yeah, which is somebody who takes... Likes the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. Where's um, the co-packing firm? 
So our first our first manufacturing facility was in the Inland Empire. Okay, we, it, here. Yeah, here, here. Got I'm it. Sorry, if, if you're not from Los Angeles, Inland Empire is forty miles in. Yeah, so, yeah it was, it, great name for any place. The yeah. Inland Empire. You're yeah. like, oh, where is that? Greenland? <laughs> like, it's, no, it's in it's, LA. It is. It, the word. I used to be like, what a ridiculous name. And then I drove into it, and I was like, oh, the word empire in terms of how massive it is, <laughs> is wildly appropriate. So yeah, so so we started working with a, a manufacturer there. Ran our first production run with them. Did in, you did you have many different manufacturers? Like, are there a lot of people that or companies that do this? Yeah. This okay. Is whole, so it's the right. same boat. You're getting proposals, if you're, schedules. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're drink if you're consuming like any protein, any any a lot of a lot of like nut packs. I mean, RX bar, like basically any massive food product. They yeah. Don't, they're not manufacturing it. Right. They have a third party, which is their co-packer, their co-manufacturer, that they're having all of their stuff sent to their ingredients. It's being created and packed. And then shipped off to a distribution warehouse somewhere else. Yeah. So you get to the point, and we were at the point at this point from the start because a box has has twenty packets, twenty sachets, or twenty shots in it. Sachet. Sachet. Nice. Sachet. Is the <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, to to make a sachet, also in a like in in a in a clean environment, you, you know the room has to be sterilized. It has to be like checked that there's sure. no, no allergens. All this stuff. So yeah. we couldn't just be making, It's a lab. It's like a form of lab. It's a farm lab. Yeah, yeah. Farm lab. So we couldn't just be making sachets in my kitchen. Like that would be against the FDA. Yeah, or... the liability would just be sure. absurd. So how much how many sachets do you buy? Or so how many do you have to commit to, right? Our first run was forty five hundred to five thousand boxes. Boxes. Okay. So twenty five thousand sachets. Well, or no, you have twenty, right? Twenty, so it would be a hundred thousand sachets. sachets. I think I'm doing that math right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so they fill up exactly. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that in your your. your, in your and kitchen. do they do they package them with the branding on site, or do you literally just get bags? Yeah, no, no, no. So it's so packaging is printed with artwork on it. Okay. It so they up. they take care of all that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, what happens is at the end of it, we have five thousand of these, and I'm holding up the the completed. Yeah, which so is we, beautiful. We pay them per, 20 sachets yeah, per box. Exactly. We pay them per unit, the unit being a box with 20 sachets in it. Yeah. And then that. So how much was that investment? How much did you have to spend to get these uh, so 100,000 sachets? The all-in investment on that, and I'm, I'm going to give a vague number because Will, who runs the operations and finances of this, will be a... Who, who sure, yeah, yeah. It. But it was somewhere in the ballpark of $30,000 okay. to produce everything. Got it. Um, so you, let's just say you guys are all in roughly fifty thousand plus perfect. a lot of time, exactly. Right, would, a lot of your would, time. All in, we were all in. We put in fifty thousand dollars. Yep, between everything, branding. Yeah, exactly. Yep, and it was I got gotcha. you. Twenty five from each of us. And at this point, are you are you guys like, well, if this fails, we just have a a, a boatload of wellness for a long yeah, I was, time. I literally made that joke. I was driving. <laughs> to, I was driving out to the uh, the manufacturer one day because we were meeting with them a bunch before before we ran production and i called them and i was like hey at the very least like we just we just bought, we just bought the emergency in bulk for the rest of our lives like that's what we just did and we kind of got it at a discount <laughs> yeah um, where do you have it all did you have it like all under your bed and some closet at your place the finished product yeah no so the finished product took up two or three pallets <laughs> okay so, yeah yeah because there, there was there was a ton of products so sure it actually then got shipped to a fulfillment center in chicago Okay. And when you place an order with us, the fulfillment center picks the order, packs the order, sends it out. So we've got products stored there. We've got products stored at an Amazon fulfillment center. FBA. Yeah. Does so, does the Chicago is that like a Spotify fulfillment or is it just a fulfillment center up. you ship up? It's called ship up. So it's a it's another like there's that's another industry or you know market sure. that, that's existing. So so you've got your co-manufacturers, your co-packers, and the product moves from them to these fulfillment centers. And what's beautiful about Shopify, this is what was so really about that creation is it takes all of these different facets and integrates them into one platform. For yeah. You. So we're running the whole business from our, our laptops. Yeah. Like we, I have, I probably have 300 boxes at my house for, you know, sales, events, for sales, events, what, marketing, know, whatever, exactly a moment, but we have thousands of boxes stored in Chicago and New Jersey is where our, our and is it similar to FBA where they, they charge you, 
um, kind of for the space and based on weight on exactly. like a monthly basis type of thing. Exactly. So, okay. So on average, we're, I, I don't know the exact subscription, you know, not subscription, but the exact like monthly fee of storage. It's not a lot. Something sure. Between, like 40 and a hundred dollars. Like, yeah. Cause we're not taking up that space. We're taking up a pound. And it's, of it's light, product. right? It's a yeah, light yeah, product. Yeah. I think this is three ounces. Yeah. It's this not like a book or anything like that. And you're not. Grams, <clears throat> Um, and you're not shipping water, which is saving you a lot of right. a lot of costs. It's non perishable, so we're not having to refrigerate. Like it's just a it's just an, an easy boxed food product. So, so then, at this point, is your now your website's live? I would imagine. So so right when you get all these boxes, as you're getting them all, you're starting the marketing effort. Yeah. So what happened was it was funny. We were we were planning on launching June one, and product was produced middle of April. Landed at our warehouse middle of May, and the second week of, or the third week of May, I was at a bachelor party for a friend, and um, a PR firm out of New York that I had been connected to through this a guy I know reached out. and was like, "We're interested in working with you. You know, here's our deck. Would you be willing to get on a phone call?" Wait, so they reached out to you? They reached out to us. This is crazy. It was crazy. We've had a lot of we've had a lot of crazy moments. Over the if there's a PR firm listening, please reach out to me. I've tried to get <laughs> a PR firm, and it's they're all just I don't know. No, they, these they, I mean our, our information was passed along to them sure. through this friend, and then we got an email back that was like they're really interested in working with you guys. Would you would you like jump on a call? So it's like right up the alley. They like it. They like the story. So we got on a call with them, and and, and they do they do some large <clears> things. I mean, they're one of the companies that works with Amazon. It's called Hunter PR in New York City. They they have some some bigger brands. Sure. And they said to us, you know, we're, we're, we're starting an emerging brands division. We're trying to like, we, we want to work with companies like you that are sort of just starting off, but we really believe that they're going somewhere. Yeah. Would you be interested in working together? And, um, are they showing you terms like dollar amounts or are they just no, pitching initially, you on? Initially they're just pitching us on. Initially they're just pitching us on. Got it. It's compelling. I mean, it's smart, right? The emerging brands division of a, huge company the makes the sense the access they have i mean like it's it's they they just have relationships and access to editors that you know we can email them but right they actually have a relationship they call them up and they say hey they can know, get you placements yeah and hey amanda like take a look at this product so we had so we met with them we decided to work with them i'm not allowed to say what the terms the, the, the terms of that but, but it was favorable it, it wasn't was favorable it wasn't yeah. like they, they weren't coming in and they know what yeah. And what we appreciate about that is as they're pitching us, they're pitching us to, you know, everything from publications to uh, news features. And a lot of that stuff is actually paid for. Right. And what's great is they go out on the pitch and they say, guys, this is a small company. They don't have a massive marketing budget. Right. So we've gotten a lot of things either at a really awesome cost or a lot of stuff for free. Just yeah, because the serendipity of it's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so 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 they're really they're really uh, cool. Hunter PR legends, that's no, amazing. They're, 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 that's they're really great. cool. Yeah. That's a great story. I'm like very happy to hear yeah. things like that exist. No, and, and um, it's, it's they're also really available, which is surprising, right? Like they have these they have these really big these big companies they're gonna they're working with, and initially we said you know under these terms, I, I can't say how long we initially agreed to. We said we'll do three months. Sure, and. It was sort of a testing period. We just said, like, hey, we're, we want to test this out. We need to see if it's actually worth it. You know, mm -hmm. It's not a, a massive cost. It's a big investment for us. We need to see if it's worth it. And I call one of our four-point people, and she picks up. You know, I email somebody. I get a response within 30 minutes. Like, it's, they're really engaged and invested in us. And I think part of that is that they really believe in the product. Yeah. And we could tell. And that's really important for us. We want to work with partners who, who believe in what we're doing. Did they like your design package that you already had, or was that a part of? They, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. they, they were. They were like, your what you've established as a brand is really. We think it's compelling. We think it fits within the aesthetic and the, and the market you're trying to go to. So I think that that helped us. I mean, they saw all of that before they reached out to us. Sure, so they knew what they were getting. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of what got them to sign on was when they saw the product. They were like, oh, we can get behind this. We don't have to do a lot of work in terms of reshaping, you know, reshaping the brand. The brand's ready to go. Totally. We need to yeah, and so have they gotten you in some 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 major publications yet? And that's gotten us a, a few publications. But what happened first was June first launch date got pushed until July fifteenth because of this. Yeah, you wanted to get everything ready, we the were timing. Like, okay, let's 
let's figure it out. Like, like yep. there's, there's now, this has changed a little. Yep. And, um, and it was nice because there were certain bugs we started encountering in the website the last week before launching that okay. suddenly we had six more weeks to figure out. And sure. so it, it was, it was just really convenient and, and, and it worked. It worked out exactly like we needed to. So we launched July 15th, really exciting. You know, we post, you know, all our you know, friends and family are buying and we're really excited. And, <laughs> That's always the first group, the friends oh, and yeah. family. And so I looked really good. <laughs> so I was a strong mind. And then August uh, was was tougher. We didn't we didn't we didn't have that we didn't have that initial push. Yeah. And are you guys advertising? Are you using mostly social media to get the word out? What's what does that look so like? We got, yeah. So we're working with a digital, a small digital marketing, basically it's three people that we were connected to. They were based in Iowa. I mean, a lot of this is just like it's sure. interesting, right? You just meet somebody, you talk to them, you're like, let's try it, and that's and that's what the first. I mean, I think that's what you know, entrepreneurship is in perpetuity, but the first year or two, like when you're really sort of strapped and trying to figure stuff out, you're just throwing spaghetti and, and, and seeing what sticks to the wall. Yeah. And that was an example of something that, that didn't work out. We invested a, a, a couple thousand dollars in this digital marketing firm that focused on Google click ads. And when it was all said and done, we had made five sales and you know, we spent something like $2,000. Yeah. So you lost some money. So four hundred bucks a sale, and the box is forty dollars. Like fundamentally, it doesn't work out. Right. So we, you know, what's also what's also just true is like the conversation with that team was not like you guys screwed us. It was just like, hey guys, like the data doesn't like suggest this just, we just can't justify this. Like sure. Where we're at, and that was that was the that was the learning lesson of August. Was so we're like, okay, well, it's really hard to get somebody even with an ad who's who's searching for something like this. It's really hard to get them to come to your website, put in their credit card. Put in their shipping information. Yep. And buy your product. In my experience, the only Google ads that work, and I think there's a lot of data to suggest this is also the case, more people are likely to click on a Google ad and purchase if the Google ad gives them something for free. So if it's like a buy one, get one, mm-hmm. buy one, get two, those ads do very well. Interesting. If you don't have one of those ads, then you're, and if you think about it, it makes sense. They're staring at a computer screen. They need to recognize what that name is. Right. And if it's a new brand, it makes it very difficult. Right. But also discounting your product is not good either because now you have a buyer who only purchased because of the buy one, get one. Right. And so it leaves you in like, it's a tough spot. Yeah. It's and, not ideal. And we had developed a, an email list. Like when you come to our website, you know, you get that pop-up that says sign up for our email list, get 10% off your next order. Yep. And we started in August running, you know, a back to school promotion off of our email list or, or running, you know, something like that. And, and there still wasn't, we weren't seeing the turnover on that bit or the conversion on that that we wanted to. Sure. And so we'd always planned on going to Amazon, but but I was like, I said to Will, I was like, I think we need to go to, we need to, go to Amazon now. Like what we're doing is, is not working, right? Mm-hmm. And so we shipped a bunch of product to Amazon and immediately, like just just sales. Yeah. So started, started flowing in and we were like, awesome. Like this, so, so now we have something to sort of sustain our costs because Will and I, we invested our own money. We were, we were really, we were really fortunate. I mean, it's, it's a sad, but a, a happy story. And somebody put this in a way that I thought was, it was so lovely, but around, it was June of 2017, our grandmother passed away and she passed some money on to us. Mm-hmm. And so we used, we were sort of, we were sitting with this money and we, we used that money to start this business. And somebody's like, Oh, she's your angel investor. And I was like, oh. that's exactly what she is. So, so we were, we were lucky in that we had that to start. That is a beautiful way of putting it. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was really, it was, it was, it was really. I, I love when somebody said that. So yeah, shout out to grandma. Yeah, shout out to grandma. Um, so we had that to basically get like product created, right? Mm-hmm. And what we, what we were planning on doing was we were planning on saving money and then using that money to uh, start the business. What we now were able to do was save money and buy ourselves a six month, don't have to work another job period. Yeah. So you can just focus. Exactly. Yeah. And so we, 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 we saved, you know, money from, he was working in logistics and beer. I was working in sales and kombucha. And we, we both said like, all right, we're leaving our jobs. We're doing this for six months. We're like, all we have to do. When did you leave your jobs? So we launched July 15th. I left my job September 1. What was that like? They were awesome. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I meant for you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 
I was ready. I've been planning, okay. this, right? like, I've been planning this for 12 months. Right. Right. So it wasn't just like, a, we got to leave. Like, I, Did, were you planning on leaving, let's say, maybe earlier, and then you delayed it because of the six-week period of when you engaged the PR firm? Or was it always September 1 that you were? It was always going to be the okay. end of the summer. Okay. Because in kombucha, the hot months are important. And I... I got you. I like these guys. Like yeah. I, I was, I, so I told them actually June one. I was like, here's three months. Yeah. Like, let's find me a replacement. And then August, I sort of went to like part time. Yep. But I was still, I was still working for for that month. But I started planning August, September a year earlier. So I was putting a month, putting money away, so that when I did leave the job, I wasn't suddenly like, oh no. Like, right. You're ready. Like, what do I do now? Sure. I I knew what I was going to go. And so. And your co-founder, same thing. And he did the same thing. Logistics and beer, yeah. yeah. And so September we started seeing these Amazon sales roll, which was really exciting. And that that afforded us like like suddenly we're like, you know, the goal became, okay, cool, let's get our sales to equal all of our monthly costs. Yeah. Like like that's that's goal number one. As soon as we've achieved that, now the goal is to get sales to be able to cover one of us to work. Yeah. In six months. You know, it's cool. We're out, we're, we're almost there. Now the next goal is gonna be let's get sales to equal, you know, covering both of us, even if it's covering both of us on a part time salary and then we go get a job waiting tables or something sure just the ability to be at your desk from nine to five at least two to three days a week has been so huge for us yeah um, and right now we're at, the, we're at our desks five days a week and the goal is by february that, that doesn't have to change what have you what about amazon has been the hard part is it is it getting people to review is it um repeat orders what's the what's kind of the part that it's hard to control do you get a lot of questions around the product well, no, Amazon's actually, what's cool about Amazon is there's literally zero barrier to purchase, right? Right. So the, the hardest part about Amazon has been getting your product noticed. So when you go into your, it's called your seller central, which is sort of your back end yeah. of Amazon, there's all this data, there's all this advertising you can do. It's like how, it's- It's clunky. It's, yeah, it's complicated. Yeah. Like if you want to like make like these super niche adjustments, you download this Excel sheet, it's wildly <laughs> complicated. And then you fill out the Excel sheet and like you're putting it up and I don't. I was on the phone with Amazon when I was doing this yeah. because I'm like, this is so, I'm an engineer like by training. I'm like, I don't know. I, why am I calling a support to upload a CSV? Like you guys probably have a gazillion people who want to be on Amazon. Right. But this Excel sheet prohibits, I'd probably say 90% of them because it is not easy. No, I, I, and you know, this is the benefit of not having another job. I literally one day to do some of that. <laughs> Spent the whole day. YouTube yeah. It was 90 minutes long. It took me 10 hours to watch it. I'm just like, play, get the second, pause, do that thing. Like, I was literally just like, and I went and had lunch. I came back. I was 40 minutes into the video. It's just like. Have you so, run a sale yet? Have we run a sale on Amazon? Yeah. Like a discount sale? Yeah. Not yet. So I'll tell you a story. We okay. did this one time. And um, for whatever reason, we decided to make the sale 100%. We were trying to do buy one, get one free. And you guys did the whole thing. We did the whole thing free. <laughs> And so there was this one day where we get in like an email alert because we had sold out okay. like 10,000 units and we're thinking like payday. So we, so I log into our seller central and it's like, no, it shows you all the revenue, but then it shows you how much you get. And it's like zero. And I'm like, what on earth happened? And so my business partner was the one in charge of the seller central. So I like call him up. I'm like, Maddie, what, uh, what's, what's, go <laughs> what's going on with Amazon? He's like, D, I really fucked up. <laughs> and, then, oh, no. and then I was like, well, I guess this is like a lot of good marketing. So it proved that it right. worked. We called Amazon. I think they gave us some money back. Like they realized it was an error. Right. It wasn't clear if the error was on our end or on their end. I think it was on our end, obviously, because we're just putting it into a computer, basically. And so it's reading the Excel sheet. And um, yeah, that was that. Yeah. But there's a lot of people out there that we made pretty happy. What I was shocked by was... How many people purchase the product? It's like, how do they know, right? There's all right. of a sudden a machine at work saying this product is on sale and just displaying it. Right. And the number of purchases was insane. Well, there's something going on in the algorithm that there's you know, for I don't sure. Understand, you know, nobody Free understands. product right to the top. <laughs> right. And it's just like boom, like get this. Because the other thing that Amazon is constantly doing is they're trying to, they just want all their consumers to be reliant on Amazon. So it would make I, I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked if Amazon is losing money on every single order that they're processing for us right now. All in, it costs us about nine bucks to fulfill an, an order on Amazon. And that gets us storage, two-day shipping, like 
all that all that stuff. My you know will just because when we first got product landed on Amazon, the, the it's it's warehouse in New Jersey. He went and ordered product at eight a.m. and it landed at his house by eight p.m. that day. Same day. Wow. Same day. And like you know we've all become so used to that. It's just the way Amazon works now. Yeah. As I've done this over the last year and a half, and I've been working with other fulfillment companies, that's insane. Yeah. Like an order comes in. The computer processes that order. It prints that order off. A human is given that information. They go pull that thing off of a shelf. They put it in a box. That box is pushed somewhere else. Somebody looks at the box and all the things in that box, organizes them, packs them into packages, that boxes that thing up, labels them. They get put into a van, they drive, they're dropped off at his apartment in Brooklyn. And that happens in 10 hours, which like, I, you know, we've gotten used to it. Like I watched a YouTube video for 10 hours. Like it's unbelievable <laughs> scale and, and and speed at which they're moving product. But that's why I think they're pushing, you know, your free product to the top is they're like, right. oh, let's just get everybody really relying on this service because at this point we all are. I mean, right. It's, it's, it's very useful. How do you, do you know how people find you? Is it so like, what is, what is it that they're searching in the I search bar? I, it's I, interesting. So, so that's not totally true. We do run ad campaigns. Okay. And I do see where we're being advertised. Is it, is there like a wellness center that Amazon has like a tab? No. So people, so, so we're, we're often, when I, when I download an advertising report, I'm often seeing like, what was the search term that they typed in and then Amazon decided what was to it? advertise? A really common one is wellness shot. Oh, okay immunity shot and then i get all these skews and i go click the skew and then i, I just it's like a bh506 it's the long number yep and i uh if i copy that number and then just paste into a standard amazon search it'll pop up that product okay so we started to learn like for example there's a uh there's a ginger i forget what the, what the, what the product is called it's like a ginger jug it's just a, it looks like an apple juice jug of ginger juice we were getting advertised alongside that product okay like I think we got offered like 15,000 times. You only pay if somebody clicks on it. We had, you know, a thousand clicks, not a single sale. Yep. So we're like, oh, that that product is awful for us to advertise under. We went and we just basically tagged it as like, do not advertise under this product. Yep. But then we've learned that there's these small uh, liquid ginger lemon cayenne shots that if our ginger lemon box is advertised next to that, we actually have a real good chance of converting that sale. Right. But if our turmeric box is advertised next to that, those Zero. Sure. Ironically, that company also has a tumor shot, and the same applies to reverse. If our tumor box is advertised next to it, we have a good chance of converting that sale. Ginger box, no shot. And how much is the box on Amazon? 40 bucks. So, so we're 40 bucks across the board. Uh, 40 so bucks, 20 wellness shots. Yeah, so two bucks a shot. Yeah. And that was the, that's when we talked about it at the very beginning. There's this 49 50 cent option, and there's this $5 option, and there's nothing in between. And I've, you know, I've heard on, on some of your other episodes, you always say, like, run the numbers, run the numbers. And yeah. that was something that Will, being logistics and finance, is amazing at. So he's, you know, he builds out these. I had this fantasy initially of everything's organic. You know, our ginger and homework is full spectrum, which means the nutrient content is the exact same in the dry process plant as it is before the drying and the processing. And I was like, it's going to be 20 bucks a box, $1 a shot. <laughs> and Will... You know, after, Which you could totally run your company at that amount, but you wouldn't make any money. You'd be homeless. Especially because we had no shot at wholesale. Right, right. So that's, right. that's exactly problem. right. And, yeah. so, and, so, and that's what we eventually are. It's like, this is a perfect checkout item. It sits at the checkout at Lassen's at Whole Foods or wherever, you know, wherever we end up. And somebody pulls off two sachets and it's a $4 addition to their, to their checkout as opposed to buying the whole box. Ah, like that's, makes you know, sense. We intentionally design UPC bars into our sachets so that those can be sold individually. That's really smart. So and the barcodes are on it. Exactly. People can, okay, that's Everything, smart. Everything's ready to go. And so Will, you know, Will called me as he was prepping order ingredients and everything. And he's like, yeah, we're not doing this for, for 20 bucks a box. And yeah. he, he just, he just, he just showed it to me. And that's what's beautiful about <clears throat> having somebody who's so, you know, just good at, 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 at finance and logistics is he was like, Chris, I know that you want the story to be that this is a dollar a shot, but like, here's how the story lays out numerically and we will not have a business. To that point, would you ever consider making half a box? So that way it is 20 bucks? Um, I mean- Is it like an intro package? I don't know. We've, we've looked into like doing, this is, this is a ways away. We have wondered if there's a way to do like a, a bulk container with a scoop. 
Mm. Uh, you know, so yep. so and that we would be able to drive costs down on because you lose all this packaging and all you're buying is just like one unit to then pour powder into. Right. That's right now something that I guess you'll start to see that, right? If you get a lot of repeat orders, you can say, Okay, this becomes our market for the exactly. scooping people versus this is this could be easily for people who are traveling, but also for people who use it every day. Right. And we do find that like what is really convenient about it is the transportability. Sure. And so right now the the larger container thing doesn't seem to make any sense. There is a world in which, yeah, we could cut it down to a ten sachet box, but that doesn't really that's not really conducive to retail. Yeah. And so our goal right now is like keep our keep our skewless short. Yep. We've got three products. You're already invested. We've invested in that, like let's <clears throat> And so outside of Amazon, how are you driving traffic to your website? So would we, we have a couple you know, exciting, exciting marketing opportunities coming up. We were recently featured on Reader's Digest. It's one of the under gift guide for the Jet Setter, so travel. So this is where our PR firm is starting to pay off. Hunter PR. Yeah. No, coming Hunter, through. Hunter came through. The real deal. We were written up on AOL two weeks ago. I'm sorry. Weeks. America Online. Uh, America Online. <laughs> which is, I mean, like, like, it was amazing. Deed, deed, I, I, deed. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know that. They have a huge fo- My mom, huge following. she's not listening, still uses AOL. A ton of people do. And it's I'm like, what do you do on there? She's like, oh, my news is all there and the games. And I'm like, what? Really? No, it's it's really, so whenever Hunter emails us a placement, they also let us know what that audience reaches. And AOL is something like 16, 17 million people. Yeah. And then. Um, you might be the AOL of the wellness shot world, if you think about it. I, I Early hope, mover. I hope we're a more progressive <laughs> version of that, but, but, but they did well. Yeah, they, they're, they did they're, well. They're 16, doing, 17 million today. Still yeah, good. They're doing fine. Yeah, Yahoo, Yahoo Lifestyle did something on us. Pure Wow recently wrote us up. Um, we actually, yesterday, we agreed verbally to a uh, strategic brand partnership with Barry's Boot Camp. Oh, dope. So we're going to be working in their in, gyms. In all, and we're going to all the Los Angeles and New York studios. They're basically running like a, uh, they run a month long sort of wellness event every yeah. single year. And the final week of that, it's Rooted Shops is a strategic partner of Barry's and we'll be in there. We'll be in all of, we'll be in all their LA and New York studios for a week. Shout out so, to that. Yeah. That's what's up. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Will you guys, um, will it be in this format or were they looking at maybe selling it's gonna, it? It's going to be boxed. Okay. And, and then they'll be, they'll be handing out uh, sachet samples. That's actually smart. Even if it doesn't work out with berries, I mean, there's, that's a smart play. So, right? I mean, the exposure is, yeah, the exposure will be 25,000 people. Berries is awesome. They're really, they, like, the people I've been working with there, they're really excited about the product. Yeah. You know, they, it was funny. I actually emailed them. What I do when I, when we get placements is I'll reach out to people I'm talking to and say, hey, I want to share this with you. And I reached out to the head of brand partnerships over there who I've been chatting with for three or four months. And I was like, hey, I want to share this pure wow article and this pure digest article. And she wrote back and said, hey, I'm actually I'm thinking about you. Let's jump on the phone. And that was, that was three days ago. And then we, we lost did 72 it. hours of just been. So it sounds like the strategy has been not so outside of Amazon, right? So get Amazon to cover your your business costs. That yeah. makes sense. You're covered there directionally. Everything is looking good. Exactly. And then instead of necessarily spending all of your time on, let's say, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you're leveraging the PR to help promote and eventually get the brand out there so that people then go to the website that way. Exactly. And 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 the other thing um, that we actually just shipped yesterday was we just shipped our fulfillment. We're gonna have the Goop Holiday Gift Guide. Nice. Which is Gwyneth Paltrow's lifestyle and wellness website. Yeah. Um, and we shipped that product out yesterday. That, that gift guide goes live November 17th. Yeah. And, you know, what, what, what we're doing is we're basically just building brand awareness. And we were talking to a guy who, who's been in the, the supplement health and wellness space and his comment, which was, was tough to hear, but it makes sense. Um, and fortunately, a lot of the stuff we've built has been, you know, in some way, a wholesale relationship. He's like, your first two runs, you just give them away. Like your first two production runs, like that's how you have to think about this. You don't actually give all of it away. Sure. But like, you need to be seeding this product so that you establish fans. Those fans will eventually manifest in wholesale relationships, whether that's with that fan you've created or somebody who encounters your brand, you know, in that fan space. Yeah. So between Goop and Berries, we're... November is going to be, I think, a really good sort of putting us on the map as a as a market leader in this in this concept. Sure. And then, do you have any sense of sales? And so, in terms of like, it's not really a gift. It could be, but it's not necessarily a gift. And so, your your peak sales wouldn't necessarily follow the holidays, right? How do you mean? 
somebody might buy you a present for Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be maybe clothing or sure. a book. I don't know if you've seen. So if, if I if I had emergency sales figures in front of me, yeah. and it's just an Excel sheet, and it starts at January and it ends in December, it. would it would it completely go off the charts in December, or is it? What are you seeing? Some of the data yeah. give you in terms of your your. Let's say your season. Are you a seasonal product? Totally. Yeah. Or, um, yes is the answer. So, okay. So we don't know how it's going to relate yet to gift giving season. Mm -hmm. We are writing up on a bunch of gift guides just because I think this is like an easy stocking stuff. It's just like an, it's an easy gift. Right? My mother-in-law will for sure get these. It's, it's, She'll be all over cool. this. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's cute. Like you pull this out of your stocking, you're like, what is this? You know, or, you know, yeah. you give this to somebody, a white elephant. Like it just sort of is, is fun and aesthetically trendy and appealing. So I, I'm optimistic about gift giving season. I sure. don't know the, the answer to that. But what we are seeing is a real uptick heading. So we're getting into Ooh, summer. what's cold and flu? When is the cold and now? Now, Basically, okay. Now to like February beginning. Does Calif Does LA have a cold and flu season? <laughs> Not as much as New England, New York, yeah, you know, Chicago. Those places are frozen. Are really seeing it, and, and and the good thing is like that press is national. So go to rootedshots.com, buy the products exactly. because uh, if you're in Chicago, you for sure don't want to go outside. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's you, you don't want to get you don't want to get leveled for two weeks. <laughs> No, that's, I mean, that has been, so, so that's what we've learned. It's like, oh, we're seasonal. We're, we're, that makes sense. We're cold and flu. I got you. Except California. I'm, then you're just this all the time product, I'd imagine. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're fitting into the, I think from October, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of making this up. I mean, we're, we're five months in. Right, months right, in, so, right, right, right. So I don't have you're projecting. Definitive. Yeah. But what I'm assuming is that within like a niche health and wellness space slash traveler space, we're in, we're a year round product. Right. You could be we're November. We work, yeah, exactly. We work in the spring. We work during cold and flu season, the holiday season when you're traveling home. Like, if you're if you're flying on airplanes, we're a great product. For you. What has been the best state so far that you guys are just seeing? Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's big it's, it's, markets. Yeah, and, and and you know what I always say is, and this is so true of New York and, and, and Los Angeles is, if you're going to go pay thirty dollars for a fitness class, whether it be Soul Cycle or Aries or Soul Cycle, Orange Equinox, and other good yeah, partners. Equinox, all those, all those places. If you're willing to invest that money into your health and wellness, yeah, that that investment is going to leave your one hour workout. You're going to invest that money in other aspects of your life, and and we're seeing that you know play out, and we expect it to. Yeah, metropolitan areas. Chicago also doing well. Chicago's doing well. I mean, New York and LA are your top markets. Definitively, that makes number, sense. Number one. Which one is number one? Is not. No, Doesn't matter. There's not much sure. differentiation. Chicago is definitely seeing some action. I think part of that is because Will's from Chicago. And so, so he's pushing so, it. So there has been like he lives in New York now, but between we have a bunch of relatives there, so we're seeing all these people buy with like last names we recognize, but we don't totally know who they are. They're friends of friends. These are like friends <laughs> of friends of family. Of, um, That's always the fun part when you stop recognizing the orders, and you're yeah. like, "This is a complete random." How exciting is that? We had that. We had that. I, I, I remember it was like five days into launching, five or six days. Every order that happened, I would I would text Will and say, if I didn't know the brand's name, I'd say, do you know this person? So it's yes or yes. And then there was one, the five days into launching, an order came in from Pennsylvania. And I was like, do you know this guy? And he was like, no. And then I just wrote in all caps, stranger order. It's like, that was the big moment, right? That's was, huge. You know, we were looking for it. Did you did you guys ship him an extra a special thing, or did that one come through Amazon? No, that so that was early. So that just came out of Shopify. Amazon now, I mean, now a, a stranger order is normal every day, right? But that first one is. I remember listening to an interview with the Warby Parker guys of all people, and like they had that same moment of like the first person who ordered our glasses that we didn't know. Yeah, it was good for them. They remember the person's name, but but like right. it was that moment of just like oh my gosh, like. Somebody, because when, when, when you know them, there's always the like, do you get it? Or are you just doing this because you support me? When right. a stranger buys it, it's like, oh, you get what we're trying. Like, you get it. This is important to you. And it's important to you outside of me. And totally. that's really exciting. This is what I like about our podcast is we have listeners from states that we've never been to. Right. And it's just so amazing. Um, or countries even that we see all the whole data on like the world. And we're just like, wow, we have people in Japan and people in Saudi Arabia yeah. that hear all your stories but you're super excited let's uh let's take a break and enjoy some of this wonderful 
product, and then we, we can talk about it. Great. Awesome. Our legend is in the room, Nick Conrad, professional taster of the wellness shop. Which one uh, do we gonna do you want us to start with? Okay, we'll go we'll go sweetest, fruitiest to sour and spiciest. All right. So the first one is orange strawberry. It was meant to be like really mild, fruity. This was actually featured on a website called The Daily Mom, like one of the top back to school products. So it's like just it's really it's really approachable. It's not um, it's not intense or you know anything like that. Yeah. It's got a nice pink color. You're getting that from the strawberry. There you go. Oh, thank you. Tell us what you think, Nick. Great smell to it. It's got smell, which was actually something we were super, Ooh. super excited about. Because yeah. it's really hard to get powders to have a smell to them. That's delicious. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have predicted that. Yeah. No, I, I, I was that was that was an achievement of the food chemist. Like when they pulled mm. that off, I was like, wow. I could drink that all day. This is really good. It's really easy. So remind me of what's in this one again. It's you've got organic orange, organic strawberry, a touch of organic stevia, which is a natural plant-based sweetener. And when I say a touch, I literally mean like it doesn't take much, beautiful. right? Yeah. Because when you're usually buying stevia at like a at a grocery store in a packet or something, we have it in like the this thing, and I think it'll last like ten years. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and most of those packets are like a tenth stevia and then nine tenths filler because it's so intense. So yeah. we really have like just a. And we have ascorbic and citric acid. Ascorbic acid, they're both naturally occurring citrus acids. Ascorbic acid is which is vitamin C. And then citric acid is just another citrus acid that sort of gives citrus its its bright, you know, sharpness. And uh, that was just because we wanted to help. The strawberry was pretty sweet, so we wanted to bring out that one a little bit more. Delicious. Yeah. Oh, what's the next one? Okay. Next one is the turmeric, orange, ginger, black pepper. So like I said, the turmeric and orange are full, or the turmeric and the ginger are full spectrum. So the the nutrient content in each of them, yeah, yeah. The nutrient content in each of them is the same pre and post processing. What's really good for you in turmeric is an active compound called curcumin. And so we're making sure that that is at the same levels pre and post processing. And then in black pepper, there's an active compound called piperine. And without without piperine, it's really difficult for your body to absorb curcumin. So that's why we're including the, the black pepper. It does give it a little bit more like a bite. I would say it's spicy but it is like it has like a kick to it the kick is more in your throat than it is in your in your mouth and on your tongue this is the one i'm most interested in because if i was out in the store and you know i, I bought emergency before and, and other uh, like powdered drinks and stuff if, if i had seen turmeric i don't know that i would necessarily jump to, right. to to get that but the way you, i've been listening to you describe it mm. all day is it's definitely captured my my interest. Yeah, smells little, good. Looks good. A little bit of Ooh. sharp. See, that's tasty too. You know what's interesting? Oh, so you're right about the the kick and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a, in a very good way. Yeah. It's like all right, it's there. It's something's working there. This is a really funny. I, I'm just gonna share this because it happened. Yeah, it happened a couple of days ago, and I, I took a screenshot of it and sent it to Will. We got our very first one star review. On Amazon. <laughs> on Amazon. And they what, what just was, uh, ripped us for the black pepper. They were just like, way too much black pepper. I was trying to water it down. Like, but my mouth was on fire. <laughs> Disappointed. And I, just, and, I, and I called Will and I was like, uh, I was like, there it is. And, and it's funny because like, it is something that like, there's a moment where you kind of take it personally. Right. You're like, oh. It's your baby. They're talking about your baby. Right. Like I've worked really hard on that. And, and then there's also a moment of just like, okay, like, it's not for you. Like we have all these other five star reviews. So right. you know, you know. But what do you say? Do you say um, something like bad batch? <laughs> do you yeah, say do you try ever another? respond to those? Because sometimes I see like the the owner, uh, especially on like Google reviews or Yelp. It's like the owner will come in. We are so sorry that you had a bad experience. We hope we right. can make it up to you later. Do you ever respond to people like that? Yeah, I, you know, this is the, the, literally this is the first one forty eight hours ago. So I've actually been thinking about. Yeah. What was interesting about it was like, I, and I was saying this to my girlfriend last night, was I was like, I felt, I also felt really bad because I sort of sent this person felt like when they ended up with disappointed. Yeah. Like, like I was like, oh, did they think I wronged them? Like I really wasn't trying to like wrong them. Like, and it's a bummer you had a bad experience. I also don't agree with you, but I, but I, I'm not trying to like. Sure. Hurt totally. You. Totally. <laughs> you know totally. What I mean? yeah. So I, I got it. I, I, there's gonna be some form of reach out right now. Will you ever tone down the pepper, or do you think it's right? I think it's right. Yeah. Like you said. This just wasn't the product for that person. Yeah. I mean, you can't please everyone. I think it's I, I think it's right too. 
I, and I like it. I mean, I, I think that what this, the market we're speaking to, so if, I mean, if this is intense for you, the next one we're about to try, ginger lemon cayenne, which was the initial inspiration for the product. I love like, ginger lemon cayenne. Like it's just, Anything. it's just, it's just masochistic. Like there's not, it's like, it just hurts. Like it's <laughs> sour, it's spicy. Will you ever do a variety pack so that way someone can try all three without committing to 20? We're looking into ways that we could do like a sampling where yeah. we get people a sample so they can try it all three before they buy them. Got it. And, and we have some ideas for that. Yeah. That seems to be the perfect thing for the individual sachets. Totally. You know, like where I don't know if I'm going to want 20 of this, but let me take one of each. Exactly. And it'll be fine. Have so, you heard from your customers a little bit about how they're using it? Is it mostly a morning product? So... It's, it's been, I mean, I think it's, a, it's been a, a, actually really like a mixed bag. So like morning and evening seem to be the two times. And then I, we get a lot of photos of people using it on airplanes, like, like a surprising mm. amount of photos of people using That's it such airplanes. great PR. Yeah. I love it's, that. it's a really cool. And, and we have, there was like a family friend who's a, an airline flight attendant. Mm -hmm. right, so, so ginger, lemon, cayenne, pepper. It's just sour and spicy. I like it. If, if you don't like it. I can it, smell the, you can, the, I, the lemon. I, I, yeah. I'm not offended. It's, it's meant to be painful. What's interesting to me is... Oh, that is... Whew, hot. It's, it's like sour and then like the heat kicks in right away. Oh. Does, yeah. Do you have any... Well, I'll say two things. What's interesting to me about this product is um, typically when things come in powder form, you always get a chalkiness, even if it's very hint, like a hint. Sure. This doesn't have that, which is great. Sure. Have you ever thought about carbonating this? I've been thinking about that this week. Like this, you could make <laughs> a ginger beer. I'm such an alcoholic. Yeah. It's no, like a no, 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 no. This is something I, I, I actually... If I had had more time this morning, this is something I need to test. Like I, this morning, as I was getting ready to come over here, I was like, if I had more time, I'd be making a carbonated. I, 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 would just, I just want to try making a carbonated shot. Yeah. It's like, what does this taste like in carbonated water? Because I've had literally in the last month, like eight people ask. Because then SodaStream like, becomes an easy player, right? Totally. It's already in packaged form. Totally. No, it's, it's, it would be, it would be a, it's a really, flavor profile. It would be a really easy addition. Nice. And, and in terms of, you know, what you were saying about the chalkiness, I mean, you'll notice is, you know, some of the bottles that have been sitting for longer, they do settle. Um, that was because right. we didn't want to put in any, you know, like dissolvents or fillers. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if you go to a juice shop and you look at a bottle of juice, it settles. Like at the bottom of that juice, sure. you know, yeah. juice, there's this, there's this sort of Anything natural sediment. settles and totally. people don't realize that, but, but yeah. just shake it and you're good. Which one's your favorite? The last one. Honestly, yeah, yeah, honestly, like wow. it was, I, it's one of those that I'm, I'm sitting here and just like, all right. So at first you're just like hit with a bunch of different punches and then you're just like, I, so I liked it. Let's keep one, going. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the ginger one has, so cayenne pepper has, oh, I got some cayenne pepper in my throat. Yeah. <laughs> cayenne pepper has a active compound that gives it spice called capsaicin. And that's capsaicin, the same stuff that's in hot sauce, right? And like, yeah. So, so capsaicin is basically spice yeah it's basically just like like capsaicin is in a lot of things mm -hmm. and what you're doing is you're what when you're when you're measuring the heat of different products they exist like on a scoville heat level and the capsaicin sure. is in a bunch of those those products um because you know you're implementing some sort of cayenne pepper mm -hmm. our cayenne pepper and capsaicin comes at what's considered 30,000 scoville heat units okay which exists like somewhere between a serrano and a habanero so it's mm. a little bit more than a serrano Serrano spice with a jalapeno for reference, and a little bit less than a habanero. Um, but we put in such like so little that it's 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 pretty palatable. But capsaicin, back to my original point, is a natural decongestion and a natural pain reliever. Okay. And so it's it's you know if you're if you're if you're stuffed up, it's great. If you have a cold, it also like can be soothing to the throat. There's actually another company that I have heard of um, just through my research that makes cough drops just with cayenne pepper. I like the other two. They're all delicious. I can't decide which one I like best though. I, I, I tend to like stuff with a lot of spice to it. So the, the, the one with the turmeric and black pepper, obviously. When would you drink those. them in the morning? Probably. Cause I, I don't know a coffee drinker. Sure. This, I can see this totally but being this is like more, my, it's like a my kick me up. Like, you know, yeah. like, let, let's get up and get going. <laughs> yeah. Let's start your day. If I'm getting sick, I do one of the turmeric and one of the ginger. Um, otherwise, how many do you drink a day, would you say? One. Okay. I, I, you can drink like two to two packets, two, two to sachets, three, I would yeah. say, a day. At a certain point when it comes to vitamin C, and this is why we only have 500 milligrams of vitamin C in ours as opposed to 1,000, which is in a lot of the vitamin C packets you have out there, your body can really only use about 250 milligrams. Okay. So after 250 milligrams, you're just peeing it out. 
Right. Now, yeah. there are studies that show if you get sick, the body can actually use more vitamin C, but it's not looking like it's 5,000 milligrams or really even 1,000 milligrams. So that's why we settled it on 500. Um, the other thing is if you consume 1,000 milligrams at 8 a.m. or 500 milligrams at 8 a.m. and 500 milligrams at 8 p.m., like you have a better chance of actually absorbing more of that vitamin C at those two different time periods than your body trying oh, to take it all in at once, right? What's next? What's on the horizon for 2020? So we, I mean, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of, of goals right now. We have this this very partnership that um, yeah that we're really excited about the group holiday gift guide. We're really excited about, and then it would be you know I, 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 it would be irresponsible to say anything's happening, but we're reaching we're we're, we're talking to a few distributors. We're talking to a couple of larger wholesale accounts, and that is sort of our next step. Where are you guys raising money? Are you guys looking for investors yeah, or yeah. just bootstrapping for now? The goal is to continue. Yeah, uh, our goal is to own the entire company for as long as we can. Yeah. Are you and Will split 50 50 yep. down the middle? Right down the middle, and everything. I mean, it, it was us from it was, it was both of us from day one. Like it, was yeah. his, it, was, it was my problem, and it was his idea. And what's great about it is we complement each other just perfectly in that. I had all the conversations yesterday with the with the berries the berries team, and then as soon as we agreed on what we were doing, they were like, "Great, this is how much product we need. This is where we need it shipped." Will's I've been my phone's been blowing up while I'm doing this interview. Will's been like uploading, you know, what we need shipped, where, when, all of that sort of fulfillment. Sure. So he's handling that side of things, and I'm handling I'm handling this side of things. So it's it's a yeah, it's a fifty fifty split. I love it. Where can people find you? Right now, you can find us rootshots.com. Come, uh, come check us out on Cyber Monday. We are going to actually be running a, a deal on Cyber Monday. What day is Cyber Monday? Ten twenty eight? No. It is no, no, no. It's uh, it's it's twelve two. It's the Monday 12, after. Two. Okay. It's the Monday after oh, Thanksgiving. It's December now. Twelve two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you're looking for you know a good bunch of stocking stuffers, we're doing twenty percent off three boxes or more. So what three boxes would usually be is one hundred twenty bucks. It drops down to ninety five bucks. So you're getting. We've never done a discount more than ten percent. So this is the largest discount we've ever done. Um, we're also on Amazon, and uh, yeah, if you if you attend attend various classes in New York or LA, keep an eye out for us there too. Just real That's quick, it. do you have any kind of ballpark as to what you expect to sell on a Cyber Monday with with this kind of deal? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to learn. That's, okay. That, that it's, 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 that's a great question. I mean, that's what's fun about this, right? My, like, my prediction is you're going to do 3x your best day. That's, okay. that's what I would say. Check in with us then. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We let find us know. out. I'll yeah. let you know. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're really curious. And then Christmas could be even maybe 5x your best day. Christmas? Yeah. Interesting. What, yeah. What is, is, is the day of Christmas a big... Or not the day of, but I would say um, between 1212 and 1220. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Even, maybe even up to 1223, mm-hmm. given how quickly Amazon can ship things. Right. We're really excited. So check us out. Uh, email us. If you email us, you're getting me or Will. So we're, we're, <laughs> All actively, right. we're actively engaged and wanting to talk about great nerd I love it. Thanks for coming on, Chris. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We here at Startup the Storefront would love to hear feedback from you. Reach out and let us know what you think about the show. Make sure to give us a rating on iTunes. Anything over five stars is the only way to go. Our music is composed by Double Touch. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Startup the Storefront. For more information on the products and businesses featured on the show, check out the links in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.